Get in, nerds. We are playing Victoria 3. We have a lot... We did a lot of aggression last episode. Um, we're currently improving relations with Venezuela and with Portugal. Just, you know, to make that happen. Ooh, Spain is in the middle of a civil war. It's not either of these. Let's see. This is an aristocratic revolt. Interesting. I wonder what they were trying to do. Elected bureaucrats. <laughs> wow. Civil war over elected bureaucrats. Who would have thunk it? So, I'm seeing a few things going on here. I'm seeing we are a hair short on convoys, so I do want to work on getting that situation improved. I think ports are a good uh, type of work to invest in for our colonial areas, because um, they provide pretty decent wages. Uh, so we'll provide, we'll build one level of port here, uh, two levels here, two more levels here, rather. Uh, and then a couple levels more in Togo and Dahomey as well. And where in the thing do we want that? I think at the top of the steel mills. Ooh, event. Excellent. You know what? I accidentally threw one all the way at the bottom. We'll put it all the way at the top. As a joke. Not as a joke. Just... We're putting it we're putting it here so partisan papers this is an election event and we do indeed have an election happening i miss that there was an election happening ha what a hero party affiliated newspapers have been proliferating during this election season publications associated with the free trade party have been particularly effective in spreading the party line the free trade party has used the papers brilliantly or newspaper circulation is through the roof this is a boon for publishers um, I can get 20% paper mills throughput or give them some momentum. How is paper in the market? You know, 20% would be rad. A little bit of extra paper mill throughput would be just fine. So we got 16 infamy. I am tempted to save up for a little bit more aggression in South America. In particular, it's exactly 25 to try to grab Peru, Bolivia, and that state of affairs is not going to keep forever. So I'm thinking about going for that in a very sort of immediate way to try to try to capitalize on the fact that that's not too much and to grab them as a protectorate before things get silly. By which I mean before they become impossible and I need to start taking territory first, which I don't prefer to do. A tumultuous campaign. Whilst campaigning for the Free Trade Party in the turmoil-wracked turmo Ghana, Per Selgren has been attacked and brutally beaten by a group of unknown assailants. When the crowd cleared and the screaming stopped, all that was left in the street was his prostrate form, bruised, cut, and barely recognizable as the titan he had represented not five minutes before. So who are you? You're the head of the... No, you're an agitator in the industrialists. Some rest and recuperation would be best. He becomes scarred, and they lose momentum. Or get back to the trail right away, he becomes wounded... Okay, so Wounded is a big penalty to character health, um, but extra momentum. Or Scarred is a small bonus to popularity and a small penalty to character health. Uh, I think Rest and Recuperation. I don't mind if they lose some momentum. That's fine with me. Raising Concerns. The Intelligentsia have expressed their concerns about government decisions clearly favoring the interests of the industrialists. Choosing is always hard. Not because the decision is difficult to make, but because the consequences can be a bit inconvenient. Rumors are spreading like smoke from a factory, staining the clear air of the United States of America with a vicious and dense poison. This needs to be addressed, or the need to accept it cannot please everyone. So the second one weakens the intelligentsia. The third just shuffles around some opinion. Opinion is rock solid for both of these interest groups. I'm going to say this needs to be addressed. I don't want to weaken the intelligentsia any more than I already have. Because they're a really solid group. So this is Jaipur, supported by Britain. I'm just going to declare neutrality on this. Um, Great Britain's going after Dinka. I'm going to ignore that. And this one is uh, uh, Revolt in Hyderabad. I'm also going to ignore that. Britain's suppressing a lot of revolts in India, it turns out. It's not shocking, it's 1864 after all. This is right around when what's currently referred to as the Sepoy Mutiny uh, happened historically, so. Um, Benin is aloof, that's fine. Finnish mass immigration, wonderful. That is excellent. So, I'm thinking... 
Oh man, that's going to take a long time. I can do a lot of small aggressions in the meantime. Oh, I really want to. But Peru Bolivia is a big prize. I think I'm, I think I'm actually going to save up my aggression for that. And then we'll start picking off smaller states. I've been doing plenty of picking off smaller states right now. So, come on. Give me, give me a win on this. Give me a win on this. We've had some good... Anti-French Association has offered us an opportunity to sign a trade agreement with Russia. Their proposal, if accepted, is intended to counter French interests. It was a veiled sort of aggression, one which could, in theory, appeal to both ardent jingoists and those who preferred to mitigate losses. It would force the enemy to respond, possibly drive them towards reckless confrontation in response to a seemingly benign maneuver. A plan to fight the French Empire to the last Russian, one minister remarked. The representative flushed. He practiced responses along both lines, but none of them quite fit. Be happy to pursue this. This is not in our interest. Sure, we'll try to trade with Russia. So what's going on in the Russian market? What do you need? You need engines, you need steel, you need ammunition. Well, we can certainly provide all of those. Engine, steel, and ammunition, and you're selling artillery and sugar. Can't really help that much with that. But I can buy your tea. Export. Engines. Steel. Uh, ammunition. Import. Tea. Alright, well that should be fine. Although, actually, I just ran myself out of bureaucracy. Gonna need a lot of bureaucracy to make this happen. Um, let's go ahead and queue up a little more, I guess. Uh, we'll keep building up Ohio. Oh, no, we've already, we've already queued up bureaucracy in Ohio. I guess we'll have to prioritize that more than I've been doing. All right, that should be fine. All right. Movement to Enact Interventionism organizes in Oregon. Organizers affiliated with the Movement to Enact Interventionism have embarked on a focused campaign to inspire support for interventionism in Oregon. Residents of every region in the world like to say that their home has a long and unique history of tight-knit community. The organizer almost agreed. The problem was, of course, the, pro uh, the problem, of course, was that said community often did not extend to outsiders. He'd been thrown out on his ear more than an the more times that he could count, but he persisted nonetheless. If he could introduce the right phrase into the right circles, perhaps even an idea that had been rejected out of hand at first would find purchase. There are plenty of willing ears in Oregon. Um, local organizing efforts increase universal pop political strength, and extra radicals from standard of living decreases, in addition to extra political movement support, or they must concern with more grounded things. Um, half that and no... Uh, movement change. I'm going to do the second one. We'll go ahead and do that. Uh, so, what's Russia's stance on a trade agreement? They would be willing. Trade agreement accepted. Lobby opportunity completed, so that gives us a little bonus to approval for the Anti-French Association. Um, and then, ooh, we have a shortage of mana wars. Are our military shipyards not producing for some reason? Is there a problem? Oh, I can go to covered markets. Oh. Ooh. I'm going to do it. We're doing it. We'll use more glass and that's just fine. Uh, I have one level of military shipyards. That's what's happening. Okay. Uh, well, let's go to steamships then, because you need to be able to output more ships. Public address goes awry. What was meant as a routine speech about the merits of compulsory primary school by Thaddeus Butler has quickly devolved into a public relations disaster for the industrialists. Fumbling his way through a series of poorly presented talking points, Thaddeus Butler's arguments have been viciously and convincingly picked apart by his political opponents. The question on everyone's lips now is merely if this mishap was due to the inherent failings of compulsory primary school or can be chalked down to the political incompetence of the industrialists. It's the fault of this poorly thought out proposal Reduce enactment chance. That is, Butler must take the blame. He gets less popular and the industrialists get weaker. Smaller 
penalty to enactment chance, or scrap the draft and make a show of a rewrite, 10% increased enactment chance. Um, I've got a surprisingly high stall chance on this. I'm going to go for the middle one. I'm not necessarily going to risk getting an increase in enactment chance over this situation. So do I have... The Anti-French Association doesn't seem to be much happier than they were a minute ago. But we'll see. We'll see how things go. See how things go. Lots of battles happening over here in Spain. So there's the election. Soundtrack's going absolutely buck wild. Um, did Persia become a, uh, a protectorate? They did. Interesting situation. So, let's take a quick... What was I about to take a quick look at? Gosh. <laughs> right. The politics. Um, yeah, let me see. So the armed forces and the yeoman farmers want into the Republican Party. I'm not going to let them in because I'm extremely righteous right now. And that's just the best way to do things. Haha, -ha, finagledge. No one can defeat my power of finagling. Uh, let's go ahead and throw all of this stuff up above. The Oregon Cyclone. I, I don't like the sound of that. That seems like something I wouldn't want. That seems like something that's going to make people extremely unhappy. I don't like that. All right, the Oregon Cyclone. A cyclone has hit the state of Oregon from the sea, tearing through homes and people alike. It destroyed our home and wrecked my fishing boat. My family might be safe, but how am I going to feed them? Oof. A tragedy, but what can be done? 20 devastation, chance of a famine. We should put some money into relief. 10% devastation, no chance of a famine. Costs. I'm going to take the second one. I don't want to have a famine here in the United States. So, I feel like I need to be building a lot faster. So I think, with the steel situation being okay... I'm going to flip over another set of construction sectors to steel frame. I think we're going to do the ones in Pennsylvania next. Um, and that's going to increase production output. We'll do the ones in Massachusetts as well. So that's going to increase, that's going to increase costs, but it's also going to increase construction output. Um, investment pool is still very small, so government's still covering most of the uh, construction, and that's fine. All right, that's a pretty solid amount of construction. That's looking good. All right, unavoidable injuries, another stall event. With the government push for compulsory primary school, adult men have been pressed to cover the gap they would leave, the children would leave behind. However, their bodies are too large and their fingers too wide for it, and industrial accidents have been increasing. Their screams filled the factory, their blood covered the machines as if they had a heart of their own. It's the tenth time in a week that a man cuts his finger trying to operate some tiny machinery, previously manipulated only by the slender hands of a child. The protests have been rising. If not them, then it's us. No one should be doing this kind of work. Minus 10% enactment time, plus 20... Minus 10% enactment chance, plus 20% enactment time. Or the children aren't coming back, so they better get used to it. Plus 10% enactment time, plus 20% enactment chance. Sorry. Plus 20% enactment time, plus 10% enactment chance, and DC gets 5% of laborers and machinists becoming more radical. I'm going to do the second one, because more enactment chance is always something I want. Pretty much always the right call. Humble opinion. Let's pull the millet farms up above this block of government admins. I think we'll... Uh, Yeah, I think we're gonna put these millet, uh, the millet farms up above these this round of government admin, and then uh, <clears throat> and that'll be nice because I don't actually need the government admin all that urgently, especially with this going as slowly as it is. Like I've had like a third chance for a bit. I, I mean, I guess that's not actually that high of a chance, but you know, I'm doing my best here. Compulsory primary education is going to increase our maximum investment in education, which is really, really strong uh, overall. So I'm actually really hopeful about that in terms of its ability to... Alright, so the Spanish aristocratic revolt took over Spain. 
Um, so that means I've got a shortage of influence because I was using Spain as a rival. So let's declare a rival. Shazam. Uh, La Progressa Study. Wonderful. And the UK is going after Oyo to Annex. All right. You go ahead and do that, UK. You go right ahead and do that. I'll declare neutrality. I don't think I have a, any uh, any need to be involved in that. Peru, Bolivia is cautious. Well, that's probably the right call for them, since, as you know, I'm looking towards consuming them. All right, beautiful. So these millet farms are getting built. And that should provide more uh, more gainful employment over there. We are actually very short on glass um, since I flipped over the, the production methods for our urban centers. So maybe the right call is actually to throw some of those glass works closer to the top. Yeah, I think that's actually something I should do. Actually, you know what? We'll put the steel mills below. And... Oh, wow. These mill farms are getting built really fast. We'll do... Yeah, so we'll do the glassworks next. We'll do that one first, because I accidentally clicked off it. And that'll be fine. Uh, British East Africa is going after... Yamwezi, that's this? No, it's this uh, decentralized nation. All right, easy. Easy money. Don't like that France is already in uh, Central Africa here. Um, they shouldn't have... Malaria prevention yet, should they? If I get it six years, no, there's no way they've got malaria prevention. There is no way that's happening. Hmm. Philosophical pragmatism doesn't really do anything for me. Socialism would be nice. Socialism makes the, um, unlocks some texts, some laws. Ooh, 15% increase in acting chance. That's wonderful. Graduated taxation is super duper strong. I do need to do that. I never did that as Russia. And boy, howdy, was that a, uh, could that have, would that have been uh, rad to do? So I think we'll knock out those, and then maybe we'll see how things look, and maybe we'll, we'll take a mad dash for malaria prevention, because malaria prevention is extremely good. Um, that'll let us colonize in Central Africa, and that'll be Central and, and Southern Africa, and that'll be super duper useful in terms of continuing to expand our colonial empire. Um, all right. What else? What else? What else? What else? Do I have more journal entries to do? Um, ironclads and ships of the air. Oh, right. I have more expeditions. I, I completely forgot about this. Um, survey the Panama Isthmus. I need a thousand extra bureaucracy sitting around to do that. So that's going to have to wait. But boy, howdy. Would it be nice to build a canal there? Let's take an expedition up the Congo River. An expedition has been set to explore the Lualaba and Congo Rivers. A number of experts in different fields have been gathered to take part in the expedition to the very heart of nature. The youthful enthusiasm is quietly blended with the prudent fear that our most veteran explorers feel towards the uncharted continent. Good idea. A strong group of candidates have expressed their concern and leading the ex their interest in leading the expedition. However, this is not a decision we should take lightly. The first to arrive is a well-dressed, fresh-faced, almost young gentleman, whose keenness to impress was only matched by his willingness to oblige. His smile, as wide as one can imagine, was fashionably put together. If I may, he politely said, presenting his credentials. Uh, Lucius Edmondson, I think, is new. Thomas Jackson. Thomas Jackson's a relatively recent recruited general. 
Um, this is going to take 12k. I think, yeah, let's go with him. All right. On the other hand, getting the rest of Houseland is really, really tempting. I'm really, I'm really delaying gratification to go after Peru Bolivia over here. It's, uh, it, it hurts. Oh, the genesis of the new Colombian culture. New Grenada, formerly known as a North Indian nation, has experienced a widespread cultural awakening, transitioning towards a distinct Colombian culture. Excellent. Colombian, Hispanophone and European heritage. Wonderful. Let's take a quick look at our vassals. So they're still at 35. Venezuela is at 54. They're still going up slightly. Uh, we're entangled now for our uh, for their economic dependency on us, which is good. But we could even get that a little higher. So let's see. Oh. The expedition arrives. After a few weeks of preparation and travel, the expedition led by Thomas Jackson has arrived at the mouth of the Congo. From here, they will begin their journey to plot the course of this elusive river. Going up that river was like traveling back to the earliest beginnings of the world, when vegetation rioted on the earth and the big, tr and the big trees were kings. An empty stream, a great silence, an impenetrable forest. The air was warm, thick, heavy, sluggish. There was no joy in the brilliance of the sunshine. The long stretches of the waterway ran on, deserted, into the gloom of overshadowed distances. Onward! So now we got ourselves an expedition going on. So once our current economic needs are satisfied, we could definitely build up some glassworks. Actually, which which is my state in Africa that's got a ton of labor available? Wow, not a lot of them. Volta. It's Volta. Volta and Ghana both. Volta and Ghana both are going to be the sites of some glassworks. I've decided. So that should help improve standard of living in those zones. Um, Volta also can use some logging camps. Uh, we can always use more wood. In fact, I should double check on that, because wood's actually doing okay, but, well, hardwood is too. All right, well, that is what it is. Current expedition proceeds that instant. Love to see it. Come on, 50%. You know we can do it. Come on, compulsory primary school. Hey, we're in voting. Wonderful. All right, and we've got... We've nearly got the admin capacity to get started, but actually I should throw... Now's the time to throw these at the top. All right. Some kind of... Oh my goodness. An aristocratic revolt in the British Raj. Well. I'm almost assuredly going to be... Oh no, I can't be pulled in. Interesting. Alright, well. Maybe we'll leave it. Maybe they'll lose the Raj. Inefficient agriculture. The industrialists have started complaining about the existence of subsistence farms in Ohio, stating that their undeniable inefficiency should be immediately addressed. The fertile soil of our people suffers. Relegated to tired and callous hands, too exhausted for manual labor to perform at a decent level, too poor to be able to afford to use more advanced tools that would make them more profitable, this industry is just a useless investment. We've seen this before. I can either um, increase migration attraction to Ohio or, and make upper stratum pops radical, or I can make the industrialists a little salty. I'm going to go with the first one, because I do love migration attraction. Expedition member drowns. In the night, a member of the expedition fell off the boat. We could spend time looking for them, or we could move on. The screams came first, then the drowning, and that long and succulent stain on the water, red as strawberry syrup of the last moments of dawn, when the horizon is clear and the clouds look like worn-out bandages. I'm not a very good swimmer, you know. He looked over the river with a crooked smile just days ago. Good, it's almost over. Tell them to push on, peril in progress, or find him, minor peril and a delay. I'm going to go with find him. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hunt down... This expedition might fail, but I'm going to try to hunt down secondary events. 
Ooh, we got another gold fields depleted in Nevada event. I'm going to say we can't just let them leave, as I always do. And you know what that means. More mines. So let's throw those. I, I keep goofing around with the top of the construction queue here, friends, and that's just, that's just in my nature. Ooh, Alemannic mass immigration. Wonderful. The white fog. At dawn, the expedition wakes up to find a dense white fog surrounding them, greatly impairing their vision. There it was before us, a viscous and coagulated layer of nature's ill breath, like a mass of rotten ivory blood, making it impossible to guess where our steamboat was, making it impossible to even guess who the man next to us was, or whether or not he was still alive. It was calm, and that stillness of life did not in the least resemble peace. We should ignore it and continue, peril in progress, or it's not safe to sail in these conditions, slight delay. Um... I'll do the second one. I don't want to build up too much peril too early here. Okay, French Empire sides with the Anglo-Indian revolt. So now I have some offers on the table. Nope, it's only obligations. I don't, I don't want an obligation. France can go after Britain, no problem. And there's open hearth process unlocked. So... Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to switch over to Open Hearth Process. And then I'm going to grab a couple more construction sectors and flip them over to Steel Frame immediately. <laughs> we got one in Togo. We should build up more. You know what? We'll do the rest. We'll just we'll, we'll, do, we'll jump right in there. So we'll give it a week or two to flip over. And then we'll see how the market looks for steel. Steel market's pretty okay. I don't need too many more steel mills. Um, but I do need more glassworks. For sure. So, yeah, the mines will be fast. We'll build the glassworks after that. Bad news. While when reaching one of the enclaves, a letter... <laughs> I feel like we've gotten this event every time. America ha is having... A, a, I don't know what's going on in the officer corps... But I feel like these these guys, there's got to be something going on. Maybe there's some kind of epidemic of terrible opinions among the, the officer corps here because all of these guys' wives and fiancés leave them. All right. When reaching one of the enclaves, a letter was waiting for Thomas Jackson, stating that his fiancée back in the United States of America had married another man. Oh, how sorrowful the heart and heavy the mind. This traitor has bewitched my intelligence and poisoned my soul. Oh, how miserable. Oh, how desperate. If the gods of fate are fair and just, they will get this despicable woman her well-deserved end. All right, so we can let the man mourn for... We can lose progress that way. Or he'll find another peril and minor progress. I, I'm going to go with the first one. I, losing progress is not a, that big of a deal. It's still early on. What are the chances that'll happen again? Grassroots support for the law... The political wills and desires of the lower classes will always remain an opaque matter. For whatever reason, support for compulsory primary school has spread like wildfire across the United States, spurred on by charismatic speakers and lively debates in small-time social clubs. The backing what now? Well, who are we to complain? While their support was never a prerequisite for success, it sure doesn't hurt to have it either. Public enthusiasm expects reform, 20% enactment chance, 10% stronger uh, industrialists, or uses common ground to calm the masses, 20% of lower sternum pops in New Jersey become more loyalist. I don't have any reason to prevent... Preventing radicalism in New Jersey feels like a fool's errand, so we're just going to go with public enthusiasm, expedites reform. Shazam. Where are we? Where are we? We're almost done with the episode. Actually, I really want to kind of get... I really want to try to get compulsory primary school finished before we close out. Maybe we'll go a little longer. Maybe we'll go to the middle of 66. That'll be just fine. Oh, boy. The man in the street. Disagreements between, between the petite bourgeoisie and the intelligentsia are causing conflicts in the government. It might seem radical to you, but if you read the theory, I'd be surprised if you can find a single flaw. One thing I've learned from running a business is that experience beats even a flawless theory when you try to put it into practice. No progress was ever made without putting theory into practice, angry petite bourgeoisie. 
So-called intellectuals should keep their feet on the ground, angry intelligentsia. Or we need progress, but at a safe and reliable pace, minus 25% authority. You know what? The petite bourgeoisie can be salty. Was that wise? Eh, probably not. It's fine. A foreign manifesto. Halil Mokarzel. The recently translated works of Halil Mokarzel have become popular in the movement to preserve child labor allowed. He's a jingoist and, even, and a, a devout faction member, a, a, an exile from the Kazimid state. The relationship is developed to the point of Halil Mar, Mar, Mokarzel has openly endorsed the movement. And for a whole large class, there is no other road, especially for a nation so eminently practical as the American. The great thing is to get the working class to move as a class that, once obtained, they will soon find the right direction, and all who resist will be left out in the cold with small sects of their own. A struggle is an international one, 10%, 10 stronger movement, or a foreign interference ought to be punished. Uh, weaker movement, but more radical. Uh, I'm going to go with the second one. Weakening the anti-compulsory uh, primary school movement is useful to me. And finally, the fickle crowd. The populist base of the yeoman farmers have turned against supporting foreign entanglements. Pressure from within has led the group to distance themselves from the American British Fellowship. American needs first. The people say no to foreign entanglements and no to foreign treaties. Prosperity at home or chaos abroad. No foreign power could successfully attack a fortified United States of America. If it was a mistake to rely on them, they leave it. Or they must steal clear of these populist ideals. Um, I'm going to say they must steer clear of the populist ideals. Uh, I want to keep them in there because that's a pretty good uh, lobby to be part of. <sighs> Alright. So, we're doing pretty good with ad cap at the moment. We're building a lot of stuff, including all those glassworks that we're going to need. I'm looking, I'm actually feeling very confident about that. Um, let's go ahead and grab the glassworks in Oregon and have them swap over to only producing, uh, glass. Because we don't need more ceramics, we need more glass. Um, ceramics are doing just fine. Oh, actually, we could produce more ceramics, but that's okay. It's more important to produce glass because we're spending an absolute fortune here in the government on, uh on glass. Yeah, 85k on glass. We could use more steel too, but that's alright. Come on, 67%. Give me a success. Law advancement. Alright, now we're at 82%. For sure this time, friends. We're gonna do it. Transportation shortage in South Dakota. That's not great. Expedition beset by malaria. Oh, I don't love that. Uh, let's quickly throw a railway under construction. Expedition beset by malaria. The latest report for the expedition informs us that several of the crew have come down with malaria. At dawn, they weren't there. Most of our men were still... Excuse me, sir. 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 I'm trying to read. Most of our men were still in the tents, and the few that came to me, that came to me were too afraid to even approach them. They've got the illness, sir. The, the befog air around their silhouettes made me think of a ghost. Their pale faces shivered with fever, and there was nothing in their voices that seemed remotely alive. Time to push on. Minor peril, minor progress. 25% chance Thomas Jackson gets minus 50% character health due to malaria. We're telling the rest for a while. Loses progress, minor peril. Um, I'm going to gain peril. I'm going to risk it. I'm going to gain peril and progress. All right, we're at medium peril now, but let's take a look at Jackson. He's a historical character. This guy. He does not have malaria. He didn't get it. Wonderful. That's exactly what we like to hear. No malarial generals. I always set a goal of no generals having malaria. I'm just kidding. I don't, I don't ever set that goal. Alright. Benin is still... New Grenade is getting there. And Venezuela's Liberty Desire is basically at the midpoint. I think I can probably... The white fog again. Um. I'm gonna say it's not safe. I'm gonna keep gonna keep playing it safe with this. I don't have much progress, and I would really like to progress. I'd like to get some progress here, but 
It's just, it's going, it's going difficult. My finances, by the way, are going to be a lot better once I've finished these, uh, these, some of these glassworks. Because the glassworks are, again, the thing that's really mostly costing... The, the glass is the thing that's costing the most. And UK is going after Ulata. Ooh, gantry cranes. Oh, that's actually a really good thing to have right now. In fact... Ooh, and Earth Peters is spreading to us. In fact, um, that's really going to help with our convoy situation. So I'm going to flip over to an industrial port method. Oh, I can't do that because we're not producing steamers yet. But now we have compulsory primary school. So I'll think about that a little later. For now, I'm going to set education to maximum. Set the school system to educate. Maximum power. Um, and then, I think the last thing before we clear out here is I'm going to queue in some more universities. Um, I want to build a big old university... in Ghana, I would say. Ghana is my most populous... No, Togo is my most populous African state. I'm going to build five levels of universities in Togo. Um, there's a bunch of population in Sokoto House of Land, and I want to be able to kind of hit the ground running uh, once I conquer that territory, so I'm also going to put five levels of Fog again. It's not safe. I'm just I'm just gonna keep I'm just gonna keep letting that delay happen. That's what we're gonna do. It's not it's there's nothing shameful in that. So any other law changes I can do. I've got property women. Still have no social security. I could go to poor laws. That might be nice. How many unemployed pops have I actually got? Not many. So poor laws is not really optimal at the moment. Um let's see. I could go to free trade. Yeoman farmers seething. But free trade would be nice. And then again, I have various options in terms of internal security. I could go to private health insurance. Private health insurance increases... What I really want is public health insurance. Who supports this? The trade unions, the evangelicals. Let's... We'll see what we can finagle. Evangelicals are marginalized, and so are the trade unions. But the trade unions will be stronger later. And we'll have opportunities for making that happen. So, I think for now we're going to put a pin in it. Um, we are over on time, as we often have been. But we got a lot done. We finally passed uh, compulsory primary school. So I'm very pleased about that. I think next episode we're going to let our infamy decay a little bit longer. And then we're going to take a run at uh, turning Peru, Bolivia into a protectorate. It'll be potentially a real war. Let me see who they've got. Yeah, they've got an alliance with Ecuador, which isn't going to be that big of a deal for us. So yeah, that's going to be fun. For now, though, I've had fun. I hope you've had fun. And I'll see you on the other side.